Amen. Praise God. You are Amen. Thank you, Ange. I'm so excited to share with you all on tonight. Hello, ladies. And I have been sitting here listening to your stories, your testimonies. You have inspired me. You have motivated me. I have taken away something from each of you on tonight. And so I thank you. And I'm just excited to be on this call tonight. And um, um, just in line with, with everything everybody's been sharing, you know, Angel posed some questions. And of course, knowing uh, if you knew me, you would know that I try to answer every question, but I won't go through everything on tonight. But I did want to start saying how um, some of the things that you guys talked about, how you're coping um, with this coronavirus and COVID-19. And um, uh, I think all of us cope in the same way. Number one, we're standing in faith. We're trusting God. And one of the things um, um, that has kept me is I have to trust the sovereignty of God. I know that God is in full control of this situation. Um, and when we know that God is in full control, when we trust God, we trust him with our life. And so um, a number of things came to my mind when this all transpired. Um, I, I do have a daughter who's 18 years old. She's away in college. The first thing that kicked in was me being a mother and she being in Lafayette and I'm and we're home. Uh, um, even though I'm a, a nurse, I Andrew keep referencing I'm on the front line, but my mind immediately went to my daughter and I wanted her home. And of course, being I heard one of the other mothers say, I have a college student and she probably didn't want to be here. She left the nest and now she's back in the nest. Um, Christian didn't want to come home. Uh, she's on a dance team. It's the end of this, uh, the year. They was pr preparing for a showcase, had rehearsals, they had performances, they had photo shoots, and, and all her friends was there. So I that was really um, a tearjerker for me because I wanted her home, but she wanted to stay there. But the second concern for me was me. As a healthcare professional, I've been practicing nursing for about 30 years now. Um, and so and for people who don't work in the healthcare industry, just pull it into the parking lot or pull it into the parking garage where I park. It's a, it's a level of anxiety that I don't think you can really understand um, unless you're there. Because believe it or not, when you get out of your car, even in that parking lot, we have patients that's coming and going. If somebody passed who has COVID-19, if they sneeze or cough and do not cover up as they should, I can get out of my car at that time and walk into that atmosphere and I can inhale uh, that COVID-19. And so we, from the time I get out of my car, I have a mask on and all health care providers have to wear a mask when you're in the hospital. But then not only that, my husband works for the government. He works for, um, Department of Homeland Security and Custom and Border Patrol. And so, um, and they actually work with the people who comes off the cruise ship. And so we, we believe and we know that this has been here long before it came to our attention. And so even people in this office who have become positive. And so I have, so much anxiety about what if, what if, what if, you know? And so it, it, is, a, it, it is a scary thing, but this is what I, what I stand on. I think all of us have scriptures we stand on right through here. And I think so many people are standing on 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Um, and then Psalms 91 says, um, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Um, and what I, uh, what, what concerns me is that right now, I know many people are praying who have never prayed before. Many people are getting into the word that have not gotten to the word before, but it has to be something consistent that we do. We just can't call on God in a crisis. We have to call on God at all times. And so I think all of us, all of our prayer levels have gone to another level. All of us have spent more time reading the word, confessing the word, speaking the word, because it is the word. Everybody on this call tonight have said how they have stood on the word of God, how they're posting scriptures. And that sister, the sister who said, I was a Catholic, and I didn't know how to navigate the scriptures. But that sister quoted some scriptures tonight that, that showed us that she knows how to navigate it now. And so I am so grateful to God that God positions us sometimes to seek him more. Amen. During these times of testings. And so one of the things God told me early on when this about this pandemic is we have to know how to respond. 
We have to respond in faith. One of the sisters says, I'm not afraid. It's probably because some of the things that she's already been through in life that have built her up to be able to handle even this pandemic because of her, her past victories have pre pre prepared her for this pandemic, right? And so God said to me, we have to know how to respond. We can't give up. We can't quit. We can't, we, guess what? We got to stand in faith and believe God. And I think everybody on this call tonight said something about trusting God. I think that is the silver lining right through here that we have to trust God even when we can't see him, when we can't feel him. We, Because right now some people are saying, where is God in all of this? It looks like the devil is winning. People are dying. People are getting these positive reports. Where is God when believers are dying? When the saints are losing their life? Where is God in this? But I promise you that even in that, we have the victory. I'm telling you, God is in control of this situation and we have to trust God no matter what. Amen. And so I am so grateful to God to be able to share with you all on tonight that even as we go through this process and guess what? This is just the beginning. It, they say it, it gets worse before it gets better. Um, and then and it's, they're looking at the numbers are starting to look a little better in some places and they hope that it becomes a trend. I don't know how much longer we're going to be at, at, under this executive order. But I know one thing, God is going to keep us. God is going to make a way for us. And my heart goes out, Andrew, to those people who, um, like, I, I'm fortunate that I, I'm a nurse and I still have an income. My husband still has an income. I think about the people who don't. And people who like your hairstylists, your your barbers, your your um, and you're like you, you do P, you're a PR professional. You know you have to be out there in the trenches. You know you can you sign contracts. You have to you. It's like, but I'm, I'm sure you, you you're, you're good. But there are some people who don't. Ha Thank you, God. He is, baby, and he, let me tell you, what he said, what he said, cast your bread upon the water, now many days it's going to return. He can cause, he can, if he can cause it to come out of a rock, he, let me tell you, God, he will make a way, we say this all the time, that he make ways out of no ways, and this is the time that we got, let me tell you, the scriptures we quoted, uh, the word we confess, the word we have, we are fat with the word, now it's time for us to live this thing right? It's time for us not just saying it, but we have to literally, it's going to be manifesting in our lives. It's going to be greater testimonies. God is going to do some supernatural miracle work and things in our life. We're going to have so many powerful testimonies. I believe on the other side of this, God, the church is going to shine like never before. Lord, I know we're not in church, but I feel the spirit of God on this call on tonight. God is going to do some great things in and through the body of Christ. Amen. And, and I and I, ooh, on the little, I wanted to say this, Andrew, you had, I'm telling you, you and I talked about this and you mentioned it. Um, one of the things that I did, God did have to deal with me about is with President Donald Trump. And um, I had to literally, God woke me up this one morning, Angie, and told me I needed to repent because I had so much anger in my heart towards this man. And I, and I still have an issue with him, but I say, um, and not that I say anything um, godly, but I just, the, his actions, his words, the way he operates, um, he just, it just balled my blood. My, it just, I just could not take it. I could not take it. I was so upset. And not, and let me tell you this, and not only with him, I was upset with China, with those wet markets, and that president, how he would have that information, and how had they, if they had spoken up, we wouldn't probably not be in the situation that we're in to this day. You know, so even God, I'm telling you, God had to deal with me that I have to release that stuff and allow God to be God. Guess what? Because he rules the king's heart. And guess what? He's going to get the glory out of this. He allowed it to happen for a reason. Amen. But I, we have to trust him that he's going to bring us through it. Amen. And so I just, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be able to share. And one other thing, Angie, because one other thing I wanted to share, because even though I work in the hospital setting, 
and I am a nurse. Um, I have, I've been, I don't work in direct patient care right now. Um, I work in a, I work in what we call a telestork, which is like a OB, EICU. You know how they have what you, it's called telemedicine. And so because of, um, you have patients who are, and we do have moms who are come in that's been, that's pregnant, that's tested for COVID. But our role is we, we, we have, you know, actually have brought up everything. And so we even monitoring patients in Mississippi. We sit, we sit in this room, we watch all these monitors and we communicate with the staff on the front line when we see something concerning to try to prevent moms from having emergency C-sections and trying to prevent babies from ending up in the NICU. You know, so we were watching the monitors as these mothers are laboring or if they in preterm labor and things of that nature. But what was what some healthcare um, professionals experience is this guilt like I'm not on the front line I'm not at the bedside I'm not you know oh my god and so and yet I I went to I, I went to my boss I, I emailed the executives because I want to be out there you know it's like I'm, and, and yet you're afraid because you know you can just not even remove your PPE correctly and get infected you know and so um uh, and we're and then we're on call. They can say today or tomorrow. You have so many people who are out ill, healthcare professionals, and we need the L and D because I have L and D experience or wherever they want to send me. We have to be able to go without no if ands or buts about it. We can't say we ain't going. However, when I'm sitting in that bunker at night and watching those strips. I too had to deal with when I go into this hospital and they're taking my temperature. I'm going to sit in this room and watch a monitor where another nurse is going to the ICU, another nurse is going to the ED, another nurse is going to the med surgery unit. They're really on the front line. You know what I'm saying? So we you deal with that as well, you know. And so, um, but God, and um, but but I'm still able to have an impact. Because in my previous role, when I was the manager of patient relations, I have pastors calling me now because I work at Auctioner. And they have, like you said, people being dropped off at the front door. I had a pastor call just this week. One of his members in ICU at Auctioner, her husband died. So they have to now give her a message that the husband is dead while she's in ICU with COVID. Right? So they need a connection. So I've been troubleshooting. I've been getting calls from pastors and elders because I have a connection with executives that can get information to family members or try to get people in that need to see under the okay, see under that shade. So God is God said, guess what? I'm still using you because you got the connection exactly. Oh my God. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. That is a oh my god. Yes. Exactly. Jesus. You can do Exactly. Oh my God. Lord. Yes. Yes. Girl, Lord, and Angie, I was, but do, yes, I heard one of the sisters say, um, I think it was Gina who said she's been doing, you know, another sister said, I'm not Catholic, but I've been doing my, the Lent, the, the fasting. Well, I had given up, I, yeah. So, I, um, we, you know, we just come off this 30 days of prayer. We've been doing, we gave up something for the 40 days. And one of the things I did give up was the social media. I had not been on social media until this COVID kicked in. Cause I felt like I, I, I need, because of my knowledge and experience in, as a healthcare professional, um, one of the ways I was coping with this thing is number one, educating myself on this, the whole process, and then sharing the information with people out there who, of course, you got all the news people. You got some people watch news, some people don't. But that was one way for me to cope with this, to get the information, to get the knowledge, and to share it and to push it out there, not just from a, a healthcare perspective, but even from a common sense perspective. You know, um, now that you locked down, what you going to do with your time that you locked down? You know, when you do go out, how to protect yourself when you go out? You know, just, just information, how to not cross-contaminate when you 
out there shopping in the store with these gloves that you, you know, you're trying to protect yourself, but you can also infect yourself, you know? So, yes. Yes, 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 mm hmm yes, Lord, 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 yes, that's right, amen, amen, hey. praise God, amen, amen, and so I just, I'm just so grateful to Kyle, and I just want to encourage the ladies that's on the call and the ladies who will be calling in and listening to this call. And I know I heard one sister say, I'm, I'm not afraid because I know she's staying on the word of God that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Um, but one of the things um, that you, one of the things that keep me going is saying, you know what, if I did get the virus, God is a healer. And if I did die from the virus, I'm going to die in Christ. You know, the Bible says to live is Christ, but to die is gain. You know, so I can't walk around. I can't walk around in fear. I have to trust God and we have to trust God with our life that God is going to make a way for us financially. God is going to open doors for us. We're, it's, it's almost like it's going to be retro. <laughs> you know, you, you know, it's like these months or weeks that we have. Whatever we've suffered, whatever we've experienced, God is going to double that. Just like he did for Job. He's going to double it. It's, I mean, we're going to, it's going to, I'm telling you, God, he's, when the word says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, but God has in store for us, especially for those who have stood and endured the test of times. Oh, I, I can hear the spirit of the Lord say, it's not in vain. <laughs> It's not, you're going to, you have, some, some people have sold in tears, but they're going to reap in joy. Yeah. When this is over, hallelujah, glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight, Lord God. We come acknowledging your presence, oh God. For you said in all of our ways to acknowledge you, oh God, and you shall direct our path, oh God. Father, I thank you for every sister that's on this call tonight, God. You know them by name, oh God. I thank you for Marquita and Brandon and Kendall and Stacy, Lord God, and Adrian and Gina, Lord God, and Angie, Lord God, and for all those sisters who are calling in, Lord God. I thank you right now. Now, Father God, for what you're doing in the spirit realm, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that you have caused us to walk by faith and not by sight, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, even now, Father God, that we are coming through this as pure gold, oh Father God. For you say you have caused us to triumph in Christ Jesus, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that you're giving us your spirit. You're giving us your word. You're giving us your power. You're giving us authority, Lord God. We thank you right now, Father God, that we come up against this spirit of fear, Lord God. We come up against this um, this, this, this spirit of uh, disease and sickness and ailment, Lord God. I decree right now, Father God, your word. We stand on your word that you say you sent forth your words to heal us, Lord God. And by your stripes, we are already healed, Lord God. I bless your holy name, Lord God. And I thank you, Father God, that we will come through this, Lord God, with our hands lifted up, Lord God, praising you, honoring you, and adoring you, oh God. We ask that you would help us to be a witness for you, Lord God, to be a light, Lord God, to not be ashamed of the gospel, Lord God, to let somebody know, even during this time, that you are soon coming king, oh God. Even during this holy week, oh God, we thank you as we look forward to the resurrection, Lord God, that you are going to continue to raise us up, Lord God. I thank you right now, God, and I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over every person on this phone, Lord God. I pray for their families, Lord God, for their children, Lord God, for those of the loved ones, Lord God. I thank you even now, Father God, that all their needs are met, Father God. I take authority over stress, Lord God, and anxiety, Lord God, and worry, Lord God. I thank you for these educated women, Lord God. These women who have positions of power and authority, Lord God. I thank you right now, Lord God, that they're not ashamed of the gospel, Lord God. I thank you for birthing ministries out of them, Lord God. I thank you for the assignments that you're giving them, Lord God. I thank you right now, Lord God, how you're making ways, Lord God, how you're increasing them, Lord God, how you're causing them to touch the lives even across the airwaves, oh God. What the devil meant for evil, God. God, you're going to turn it around for their good, oh God. I thank you right now for peace in their home, peace in their mind, peace in their 
your spirit, Lord. See under that shade time. We bless you, oh God, and we thank you for Angie. We thank you for the sister's call. We thank you for this girl's chat, Lord God. We thank you for the lives that is touching and changing, oh God. We pray that the women who call in will be blessed, Lord God. Exceedingly blessed, Lord God. I thank you right now, God, and I call it done. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.